All right, guys. So welcome to the eleventh day of this YouTube training. All right. So we have been on a long um series for the last ten days or last ten sessions. We have been talking about technical analysis on the standpoint of you know um other blocks. I talk about market structure, discount and premium, all those things that are the basics of market structure, right? So I feel that those classes are very, very important because they give you perspective of what you should be doing, right? So we're going to be talking about a bit of the London elements, right? Let's talk about the London Q zone, right? Let's talk about the London Q zone because now I told you guys that one of the most important aspects of trading is time, right? Time is one of the most important part of trading. One time is one of the most important aspects of trading, right? Time is one of the most important aspects of trading. It's not just price or market structure or all of these things. Time is very important, right? You must take your trade at the right time, right? So now let's talk about the London Q zone, right? So London Key Zone typically refers to a window of opportunity where there tends to be um, 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 good movements in the market, right? So the, the importance of this, now, let me say this. You can take a trade at any, any time, right? But the, reasons why, the reason why I choose to use Q Zone is so that I stick to a particular window of opportunity. I am not trading every single moment. I have a particular time in which I look for setups, right? So the purpose of Keyzone is that it narrows your your uh, your focus to a particular time period and a particular given pair, right? So, and now another advantage is that the Keyzone helps you to be in the market when there is going to be what liquidity when the market is moving, right? It also be in a trade where it is taking five hours to move, right? You want to be in the market when it is moving quickly, where there is a lot of activity, right? That is the purpose of using that. Now, what is the London Q zone? The London Q zone is a time window between 2 and 5 a.m. New York time. Right? This is where I look for what? Setups, right? So I think I should write this. Because people may not see what I said. I said New York time. Right. So... Um, to get New York time, you simply come to the bottom right and click on um, time zone, and then you choose New York, right? You choose New York, right? So when you choose New York now, your time zone has been set at New York, right? The time zone has been set at New York. So that makes it easier for you to you know, know the time elements. And now if you're in Nigeria, Obviously, it's very, very simple. You just need to add five hours, right? So if you're adding five hours to this, this simply means that you're looking for opportunity between what? 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Nigerian time, right? So this is the time window we look at for what? Opportunity. But right? it's very, very simple. So 2 to 5 a.m. New York time, for now, could be translated to 7 to 10 a.m. Nigerian time, right? So that, that is the time we felt as was the London Q zone. Now, not only Q zone, you have to understand that there are specific pairs that you trade at this particular moment. And those pairs are what the European pairs, the British, the British pairs, and the chef pairs. These are the pairs that you trade during the London Q zone. Why? Because this is the time period which the banks that are in these countries are very active. The European banks are active by at this period. The um the British banks are active at this period, and of course the Switzerland banks, the Swiss banks, are also active during this period. That is why we narrow on this time period to look out for what um trade opportunities in this given phase. All right. So that is the basic of this so you are focused on pairs that have euro gp or chef that simply means that one of the pairs you can look at is what the euro usd right 
If I look at what GP USD, if I look at GP JPY, you know, like you see, you need to see this pairs. Why right, USD check? Right, you can see all those northern pairs. All right, so all those pairs are the ones I can remember for now, right? So that you can use, um, uh, you can trade during this time window, right? All the pairs that have check, GBP, and EDUSD. But for me specifically, right? Now, I'll just mention myself. For me, the pairs I focus most on uh, are these two. Then sometimes I can just, you know, keep at years, sometimes I keep at GP, GPY. And for me, these are the three pairs I really focus on London, right? I, for me, all right, I don't really look at USHF, but New York. So for me personally, I like to focus on these three pairs because those are the pairs that are my watch list. I told you guys something about the watch list um, when I was talking about trading plan. So you guys, you must have specific pairs that you look at. You don't want to look at every single opportunity in the market. Have some specific pairs that you can zero in on. You can focus on with your full effort and make a killer whenever there's an opportunity. All right? So it's always best that you choose specific pairs. So you're not, you're not looking at too many things. Right? So you can also have specific things you're looking at. Even if you set up here, you still like there's nothing there, you stay out. All right? So let's look at this. Now, that being said, we can now delete this. So now, how do we use this? Now, I'll give you guys a very simple model. First of all, you want to identify your Asian range. Right? This is a very simple model for the London QZ. You want to identify your Asian range. And your Asian range is what? Between what? 7 to 12 a.m. New York time. That's your Asian range. Now, when you have your Asian range, you want to have your daily open, right? The daily midnight candle, which is what? 12 a.m. New York time. So, you want to have that as well. Have that as noted out. That's the, the daily open. So, when you have that, what is the next thing? So, number one, you put in your Asian range in place, all right? Then you look for you now have your 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 midnight open. Now what I'll teach you guys about it, about more about midnight open as you can see. Maybe tomorrow session we talk about um the power of thirty, right? So that's why I'm talking more about New York open, right? So and the final thing that is then when you have your midnight open. Now it depends on your higher time frame bias. If you are bullish now, as long as we are bullish, right? Assume that we're in a bullish scenario, right? Maybe we're not going to buy, right? What is the thing that you do? You wait for price to drop below the midnight candle and take out Asian low, and then give you what? A buy confirmation to go higher. So this is the only thing you're looking for what? In the key zone. So now this is, this, this is the key zone now. We're not in the key zone, which is between what? 2 to 5 a.m. New York time. Right? Sorry. So you have your... You have that. 2 to 5 a.m. New York time. The price runs below. That gives you what a bullish confirmation, and then you're entering long, right below this point, and then you're targeting what the higher book, maybe Asian high, right? This is your Asian high, this high is Asian high, and this is Asian low, right? So this is Asian range high. So you can mark that out, and then you mark this out as well. So this is a model for the London Q zone, right? So this is, this is the model for the London Q zone, right? So this is how it is traded. If you're bullish, you wait for price to go below this Asian low and below the New York time, midnight open, and they give you what a bullish confirmation that was the good price was higher, right? This is what to look out for when we are what we are bullish. Now, if you are bearish. You cannot take this off. 
if you are bearish, the opposite is the case. Right? So you do the same thing there. This is the best example. We for price to do what? To go higher. Taking out the age and high. And I give you what is self confirmation of what to take price what's lower. So now you look out for what's yourself. But so this is the only thing you do what during your London field zone, right? So this is a simple trading model for a bullish and a bearish example. Now, notice this. It is not always picture perfect. That is, it's not all the time that this happens like perfectly. Right? So don't, don't forget that it's not always picture perfect. Right? So there are times in which we take losses. There are times in which it will not play out as you anticipated. There are times in which there will be no setup. All right? So you have to also be mindful of that. So that's why you must always apply good risk management. Right? There are times in which this thing will not play out as you wanted. There are times in which, you know, there'll be market will take you out, you take a loss. Maybe your bias was wrong, right? or something was off in your analysis. Right? That, that doesn't mean that you're a bad trader. It simply means that you took a loss, which is what normal with every trader. All right? So now we have gotten that. Let's look out for what? Examples. I'm going to be quickly putting my agile range too. I think it's already there. All right. So let's just quickly look at the 15 minutes time frame. All right. So I see a good example here. The mark for, for some reason, the market was pushing higher. I see this bullish break here. Market was bullish. And then look at our Asian range between 7 to 12. Right? And then can you see our price drop down and then bought? Now let's look at the five minutes time and see if that was actually what a bullish break. So you can see it obviously that was what a bullish break. Right? Can see our price went above this high. That was a bullish break. That's how price dropped into what the imbalance created there. That one have I'll figure the best imbalances. So you can see this imbalance was created here. Fine. That's how price came back, tapped into this area, and then ran higher. All right. This was a very clear example of what a London key zone trade. And when did this occur? Look at this. This is two o'clock, and this is um, five o'clock. Look at this. Look at my blue tool above here. This is two o'clock, and this is five o'clock. You can see how this opportunity happened was inside the London key zone. Right? So that's a very good example that we had there. So let's look at one last example because I don't want this video to be so long because we have been having long videos for a while now. Right now, this is an example where it did not play out, right? The market was for some reason bearish. Okay, let's let's just look at this point. Look at this one here. Market was bullish. Right? Um no, it wasn't bullish, it was bearish. So market was kind of reversing. Right, why was kind of reversing? Right, so we saw price. I wouldn't have bought this. So, this was an example where it did not play out nicely, although there was a buy here. But if you ask me, I would have expected my to drop because of what this other block here. Right, I would have expected price to drop, not buy. So for me, this was not very clear to me because I would have the directionness on this, not not buy. Right? So I almost I'm not the kind of method I would like to you and say, hey, clear out. No, you didn't play out. Right. So market was kind of bearish from year to year. Right. So I don't have been looking for buys here. Looking for sales instead. And then we had a sell the New York session. Right. 
So let's look up ourselves in this point here. Now, look at something that happened there. Now, this is on 9th of October. Let's go to five minutes time frame. And we head straight to 9th of October. All right. So now we are bearish on this market, but look at what happened there. Price did not run Asian high. But remember what I told you guys that price has to do what? Has to go above midnight open. So in this condition here, price fulfilled one condition, but it didn't fulfill the second one, which is what? Price going to be below what? Above Asian range high. Right? So one condition was fulfilled here. Markets came above here, and then you can see how the market sold from here. Maybe if you use it, maybe you know, a one minute chart or something. I've got this, uh, right? So that was kind of market social break, right? Market social broke here, and also a retest. So if you are, maybe if you maybe you are trying to sell this, maybe put your enter this imbalance here. Sorry, this has been a very very long period. Entry here, maybe some of the move this high. Maybe you are targeting this low here. And this happened inside the London key zone, right? If we're targeting this, we have to hold this thing for a very long time. Like, very, very long time. Like, very, very long time. I see you hold it up to now. All right, so price actually hit your TP, but it took a long time for price to hit TP. Like, it's only going to take it here. If, if you saw there, like, hold it up until now, when price hits the next day. If I hit TP the next day, so if you have done that, then we have got your beautiful trade there. Now, another opportunity present, maybe if maybe you have you call that first entry there, there was a second entry, right? Markets did the same thing here, run above Asian high and above midnight open. So these are midnight open here. So look at this. Markets run above it, right? Then, although there was no entry in the London session, but it still broke structure at the New York session. So there's a BOS here. And price enter here. This is going to be your second entry. Of course, I call this trade. When I'm talking about New York Hill Zone, then you understand why I, I took this trade. So I will use it to explain New York Hill Zone, right? So I actually call this one. So if maybe you are taking your trade, you are, you are holding for London session. I've called this a London Hill Zone, and then you are holding this one. So you have got two trades with the same tech profit, right? So that is how you have called this. But this one did not occur during London Key Zone. It occurred during the New York Key Zone instead. Right? So that is, that is, that is it. So you have called this in the, New, in the New York Key Zone instead. Right? So that, that is it. Two cells, two beautiful cells. Right? So let's kind of go back a bit and look for one last example. So I'll call it a day. Remember, this does not occur every day, perfectly. It doesn't occur every single day. Like this example here, market did not go above Asian high, just drop. Right? It's not every day the market does it. It's not every day. But nothing was here. So you can see it. Nothing was there as well. So you can see that it's not every day that market gives those opportunities. Not, not every day. Right? Market was bearish here. Yeah? How do I know? You can see this long bearish leg. Let's look at the bearish here, and there's no significant break of structure to the upside. The market has been bearish. Market ran up. It's going to run around below first, and then you need the key zone. Key zone began here. Right at the beginning of key zone. The market went above our Asian high, gave us our bearish break. Right? So we had our bearish break. The market went below this low. We had our retest. Right? So uh, another beautiful bearish move here. But this is not up occurring in London session, it happened in, in New York instead. So if you place a limit in London session, remember what, what I said. Price doesn't have to activate in London session. The setup forms in London key zone. So the setup form in London key zone, but it's activated in New York session. So the setup was formed in London, but activated in New York. So notice this. So look at where the setup forms, not where it active, where it activates. So the setup forms in what in the Q zone, right? It doesn't have to activate in Q zone. It only forms in Q zone. Remember, it doesn't. For time is out, this market 
the price was not activated in London Q zone. It's the setup form. That's what the setup forms, right? So it forms them. They can put in your limit and walk away. All right. So that's how London Q zone is traded. Of course, all I've said there is subject to higher time frame analysis, right? I'm not showing you guys the lower time frame approaches, right? That was news here. So that, 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 that. I know this when there's fundamental, when we have a news event, right? You, the trade conditions are not are not high, are not the trade conditions are not um, ideal, right? That means you will not see those perfect moves like you see when it's a news con when, it, when it's a news event, right? News kind of distorts the market um, movement, so it's not always picture perfect when they, they are news events, right? So when there's news, you don't always see ma perfect market price action, right? So that's basically what I have to say for today. So this is the end of this today's training. So tomorrow, we'll talk about um, the power of three before we now go over to New York Zone, right? So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and do want to share the link with your friends so that your friend can benefit from this training. And of course, lastly, these trainings might not be free forever. So do have to go through the previous classes where it is free. It will be free as long as the bootcamp is on. Once the bootcamp is over, I'm not, I can't guarantee that it will continue being free. Right? I might move into my paid mentorship group. So use this time to go through the videos. And you know, I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Have a wonderful day. Shares and God bless.